Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. It says, and I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord he says and I will set up shepherds over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. is a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the Spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good, it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word word is logos. Right? And Jesus the word is called the living logos. He's a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning, the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. The ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture, light will enter you to become an epistle yourself. A written epistle, the apostle says. Hallelujah. So this is what we are here to do tonight. And I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart and I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just Rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on god to get spiritual information you see the distinguishing factor let me tell you something many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives not necessarily not necessarily there is a spirit that is behind scripture one time the lord opened my eyes and when the lord opened my eyes i was in a vision and i saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations or greek and hebrew somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read greek and hebrew and express you know the words in greek and hebrew and bring new words we think that the anointing is in the greek or the anointing is in the hebrew or the anointing is in the english or the communication there is a spirit there is a spirit that's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed there is a spirit listen as i'm talking to you right now there is a spirit that is compelling what i'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded that's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um, uh, you know accounting timekeeping 
other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege for god's people to be gathered here week in week out some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ but what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that god has given unto us what eternal life the word here is zoe i know we talk a lot about it eternal life is not life after death listen listen eternal life is not life it's not the life you receive after death right what happens after death is the consummation the consummation right eternal life is the divine life 
God's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of God it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that God has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of God had not life watch this the Bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving Jesus that means you're coming to Christ or you're coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you the Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself right the Son of God so the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God that's why we preach that's why souls must be won. So it's, it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone. It's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. Because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven, you would have left immediately you gave your life to Christ. So the technology is, of course, it secures your eternal destiny. But the Bible says God gave us life. But that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 
right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old Are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of Christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, for this cause, because people cannot discern the mystery, some are weak, some are sick, and some do sleep. Is that not in your Bible? He said there is a mystery of the body. The mystery of godliness, the Bible calls it, that Christ can dwell in a mortal body. He said, if you do not discern it, you will be weak. You will be sick and you can even sleep. Meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of God. But the, the, the factor is this. Um, in the kingdom, there are two realities. I want you to write this down. What I'm teaching you tonight is powerful. You will walk in the glory of God in supernatural dimensions if you understand what I'm saying. There are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with. Number one is the reality in Christ. The reality in Christ. The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in Christ, we are perfected. Are you getting the point now? But then there are realities in Christ. For instance, we are seated in heavenly places, the Bible tells us, in Christ. The other reality is the experience of that truth here and now. The experience of that truth here and now. You can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality. The Bible tells us all through the New Testament all that we have become in Christ. Many times we do not understand why Apostle Paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in Christ. And then we do not understand his communications. Some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in Christ it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now. That's not true. Paul himself speaking to the Hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify, right? 
and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the sun has eternal life two verse seven and eight let's look at seven and eight hebrews two verse seven and eight it says thou hast made him remember paul was quoting from david it was david the son of jesse right the king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels right has he said at any point thou art my son you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right it says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that it, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life i authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father 
by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction is it not in your bible so when jesus resurrected he now said now the scope a coronation has happened to me right the same way it happened to adam that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given it says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality it says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get there so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ 
and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five.
in fact let's start okay verse 5 everyone read it says for they that are after the flesh do what do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit verse 6 for to be what stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what dead but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who walks based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies 
here comes a generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just I, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid I know the mystery that brought me to this palace because I came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him I can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is God 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 now let God save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kai i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid me i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when I went for the meeting, a woman was pregnant. Brothers and sisters, watch this. At least biology tells us, I'm not a doctor. There are doctors here. Um, so how the child is supposed to be formed. Eventually, for reasons they cannot explain, the child started turning mysteriously. No, the child does not turn mysteriously. Something turned it. Let me tell you, the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120. There are spirits that are millions of years. You call Satan a liar, you are right. You call him a deceiver, you are right. You call him a fool, you are very wrong. Satan is old. Are you hearing that? Absolutely. You know, sometimes the way people just talk, me, God forbid, the right spirit can do this and that and that. It's not all about this. It's not, and, and while you are talking, the realm of the spirit is just watching you. How old? Do you know in Bible days, all of us are not even up to teenagers right now? Right? yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth 
I am reality. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact, any transformation. You see that? For me, the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you. He is what you call eternal life. If you are not aware of that, be aware. Eternal life is not what he brings. His very presence is the life of God. Jesus never became the Christ. He was the son of the carpenter. He could die. That's why his parents ran away with him. But when the spirit of God came, he made him the Christ. So when the Bible says in Christ, it's not just saying in Jesus alone. In Jesus, yes, but together with the spirit of life. Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me. You see, we need to examine. It was, talk, it was a spiritual language. It was not even just talking about hearing with the ear. There is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings. And that's what produces true faith. Because when the Bible says hearing and hearing by the word, at that time, there was no books like this. King James had not authorized this. So what did they call the word? The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. I've, it's not today. It has been like that. Another person is saying, it's not only you, two of us too. Another person is saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh yeah. You see, everybody is confessing. One by one. One by one. The meaning of that is, darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim of it someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the Holy Spirit is the advantage of this generation. I am convinced that we are the generation that will return Christ. Yes, I am convinced. The Bible specifically talks about a number of things. That, as we call it, that Omega generation. There are certain happenings that will characterize our generation. Hallelujah. 
that we discern spiritual things. Let me give you an instance. Hold on, let me explain something. How many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in 1 Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I, me too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uzzah in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by right, this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings, you know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today, right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, 
This is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we start constructing a bridge. We say, that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selma. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening all around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural. Or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not the divine life we shout away we shout away but there is nothing so way about our lives if they shoot me i die so way right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me the way now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that the way life you will watch hivs get healed as if they do not exist it will no longer even be a prayer point the more i see people line up for counseling i don't rejoice to say wow it means i'm an anointed man i look at people line up for counseling and i bleed in my heart because i say shame on us it means we are doing very small a sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is God speaking to tonight? Where have you reduced God? Let me tell you. One day, maybe I'll come in the night. I'll bring a chair here, one koinonia. 
we'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i'll share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people he said privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning it was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody say i've seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that yet the bible says are they not ministering spirit i'm showing you why we have become carnal we threw away the holy spirit we are gradually kicking the holy spirit out in a bid to do what we call word 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 right word 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 just the word give it the word and, and don't give me anything else there are even people who reject jesus and say just give me bible give me bible jesus go once it's not bible even jesus should go away and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up mighty army where is the army truly there is an army that is rising up but let me tell you our level of transformation is slow we are hardly becoming like the christ there is there is a standard that has been measured for us and the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave we must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up the church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but Elijah, not in a radio station, he made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory and I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head. 
how many men of God have disgraced themselves on television how many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of God predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh? how many you see, oh, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves it's gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more today people talk about the anointing but they do not even know what the anointing is no at all I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working, no. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church what will you tell them i know what you will tell them i know what you will tell them you don't have faith if you have faith you will provoke my oil there's no problem with my own end it's you that don't, you are liars we are must be a generation that can present christ to the world in his fullness i truly believe i will be part of those people with all my heart i desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression I have received the son and that means I believe that his life is in me but where is that life we are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of God in these days the Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week I've been under an intense anointing right from when I finished the, the financial series and the Holy Ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit I'm telling you God will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit 
there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where where did you keep the spirit of jesus without measure there is no sincerity in our pursuit of god we tell a lot of lies i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and i was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie i can fake it now and say there's somebody here you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise and because i did not minister in truth my lie will do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you how many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God. Eventually as we started getting some results in our lives, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out. Now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures, it means we are growing spiritually. Do you not see the need in our world today? There are people with HIV, cancer. There are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have. We claim to have Zoe. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Then demonstrate it. He said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, This is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for, all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleeping in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, Who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, This is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. 
the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by God it was the spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth now I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that is good I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying koinonia hear me if we throw away the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God let me have somebody here just one person anybody you're a visitor you're a pastor don't worry you came all the way or oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now write, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance that you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple your temple now not a building is filled with his glory and songs begin to come look at what musicians write nonsense they, they write songs that don't bless anybody they just come up with songs the reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income when was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit when was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time, because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right 
God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision, let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened. Ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah, may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days God bring us to this place. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel. Because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, Man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power that you came here alone is a sign that victory brought you here you know most most people don't know how desperate satan is in stopping men from getting where the anointing is if you left even if your house is outside here if you left your house and arrived here successfully it's a sign that you were guided to be here
Hallelujah. He said, I desire once again to come to you, but Satan, the wicked devil, still hindering men from getting to their place of destiny. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they, among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The last verse, verse 3. It says, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. In fact, let's add one more verse, verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord as the streams of the south or the Negev. Let's go back to verse 1. When the Lord, not if the Lord, when the Lord, that means that it is something that is for sure. According to the law of times and seasons, there is a season allocated. The Bible says, when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion, when so it is for sure i don't know about you but for me it is for sure not if not if the lord when the lord turn again the captivity of zion the second thing i want us to observe from this exhortation is that captivity is real the bible did not leave us in ignorance as to the fact that even zion can be in captivity zion the city of the lord zion the place of God. He said the captivity of Zion. There is something called the captivity. Not a captivity. An exact kind of captivity. He says when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion. Restored the fortune. The point I'm trying to communicate is that the word turn around talks of restoration. The captivities of Zion. He said he did it in such a way that we were like them that dream. You have to study someone who wakes up from a dream. How many of you slept hungry and in the dream you saw a buffet? You woke up with the passion of that dream only to find out that it was a dream. But in that dream there was no limitation. You could be in Lagos and be in just in one second realities that happen in the dream realm are we together physically you knock but in a dream you can cross over to the other side he said the nature of that restoration it was in the similitude of them that dream when the lord turned again the captivity so captivity is real notice he said the captivity the captivity there may be many kinds of setbacks but there are a few that can hold a major um it can it can yield a major blow to men and women in their lives listen not every operation of darkness affects you the same way is that true there are times even physically you can have a little sprain on your finger and it may not affect you much but there are times you can be down with typhoid fever that one is a kind of captivity that can keep you down so the bible says the captivity the captivity the fact that you are the zion of the lord does not mean it should be strange as it were god would have said when the lord restored their captivity but he was honest enough to say it is the captivity not of israel of zion go and find out about zion it is the city of the great king that even in heaven it was not a shame that there was war there so the issue is not the war the issue is that there is a system for victory the very fact that war could be conceived in heaven where god is should almost be enough embarrassment war in heaven the fact that satan could even orchestrate it and it had could mobilize people where did they hold the meeting in heaven that god didn't see where did satan convince a third of the angels 
and there was war in heaven and there was war in heaven and all of a sudden Michael the archangel rose up judged Satan and there was no space for him but there was war that's the most important thing second shock and Jesus died the word died the Bible I love the fact that the Bible doesn't hide some things and the word died and Israel was in Egypt read your Bible and see how things that were not very comfortable happened. and Abraham the beloved of God Abraham for 25 years was waiting and trusting for a child yet in Genesis chapter 12 a prophetic word was upon him that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed whoever told you that every time challenges stand before you is proof that you don't have faith it may not be true there was war in heaven where the fountain of wisdom resides there was war in heaven where the all-seeing eye of God God does not see dimensionally he filleth all in all yet there was war the first message tonight is a message of hope do not be ashamed when you realize that there is something that is in the similitude of captivity in front of you. Apostle, I love the Lord with all my heart, but why are doors closed over my family? Last time I met someone, he told me that it is a shame. As many of us would say, it's an embarrassment to redemption. But the word died. The word was killed by men. Engineered by Satan himself. The word hung on the cross and he gave up the ghost. To give up the ghost means you were tired and your body could not take it again. The word died. There was war in heaven. We don't know what part of heaven but there was war in heaven. But the thing is not the war. It's not the captivity. It is when the Lord turned even if he did it once and you got into another trouble he can turn again 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 it wasn't just once god delivered them their lives were full of his deliverance they would escape from some people before they rest another wicked nation will arise and god will turn again who told you he turns just once that he did it in much miracle service don't you know that for every level you rise, there are still some kinds of giants waiting. He turned the one of March. Let him do the one of June too. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then our mouth, he didn't say then we laughed. Our mouth was filled with laughter like your mouth is filled with food. Our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, come on, breakthrough that unbelievers must talk about. <sighs> breakthrough that even a herbalist would discuss and say even in our practice we have not seen this kind. That God turns it around in a way and a manner that it must compel discussion. You know, if it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. If it's a man's doing, it's natural. If it's Satan's doing, it's alarming. If it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. He said, then said they among the hidden, the Lord. So they know. They know who can do that kind of thing. The Lord had done great things for them the nature of that turning around is called a great thing that even the hidden know that this dimension of result it is the lord when julius berger builds road for you they put a big symbol b bam they stamp it is that true so that when you are passing and you see the building when you are in doubt is it pw is it this you just see it they put it there this is our architecture when you throw a block up and it falls down and does not break you know where it came from 
there is when it breaks you also know where it came from so God says I will not only do a work if I do it generally they can confuse it with your intellect they can confuse it with one connection I will do it in a way that no man no man it is not the miracle it is how it is produced God can reveal something to you by January and slowly bless you and by by June or July you can have it it will be difficult to give him praises because you say ah but come to think of it ah, I read this book I applied principle ABC so God says hold on let me show you how that your life can be recreated in seven days and then when he does it he says go and find which other God is able to bring that kind of salvation there were other ways Israel would have gotten to Canaan but God passed them through the Red Sea when they got to the sea they stood there and God said I want to do a work it has to you see the glory is not in the result the glory is the excellency of the method that God does it in a way that even you you stand in awe and say Lord I know you are a great God but this one no look what you've done to my mother in one month look what you've done to my ministry look what you've done to my life there are miracles that happen in the bible men try to argue it but there were others the bible said was a notable miracle listen in this miracle service god does not just want to bless you he wants to bless you in a way he wants to anoint you in a way he wants to restore you in a way the key word there is the way he will do it hallelujah the way he would do it you lost your atm card and lost your wallet you are already praying and say lord raise me and or let somebody bring it then you go back to your home and find it on your bench now that's not restoration that's doing it in a way that only god would have done it are we together by the time your enemy calls you with a seed and says just to let you know that the God you serve I want to serve him that's not just salvation that's salvation in a way that will make an onlooker know that this one is the finger of God then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing and they said among the hidden the Lord had done great things for them verse 3 the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad the Lord has done great things for us before we even started testifying the unbelievers were already there and then verse 4 says turn this is a prayer now turn again our captivity that means a corporate people can be under captivity Nigeria can be under captivity a state can be under captivity but they can cry and say lord turn again our captivity like the streams you know how you divert water that when you are watering a garden or whatever it is irrigation farming that water can be going this way and you can block it and make it go this way god is saying my life was going this way turn my life around in a way and a manner that people say ah, we already predicted that by next week you should be in the pit what are you still doing here and I'm standing here only because and they say we even gossiped it we had concluded that when you are in the pit this is what we will say we have written the testimony and while we were discussing we didn't know that God can turn again the captivity of a man many people don't believe God we believe our problems we are used to it that every time God speaks we just hope faith is not hope listen carefully faith Bible faith is not hope it's not hoping God will do it faith is based on a revelation God will convince you 
and tell you I am able to do it and then activate your spirit through the revelation of his word for you to know that this thing is true that God can turn a man's life around I spoke I was in Port Harcourt the day before yesterday yesterday we came back today and I spoke on something I wish I had the time to teach you it was on Ebenezer the mystery of help from God hallelujah he said my help comes from above I don't know where your own comes from but my help my help not our help I lift up my eyes to the hills because that's where kings live and in every hill and every palace there is a system of protection but uh, this this situation defies the help that comes from the hill he says my help cometh from above cometh from above cometh from above sometimes when God wants to step in and help you he keeps quiet while everyone mocks you because mockery gives God glory he allows men to vent their foolishness and he says are you done he says now let me show you what happens when the creator of the ends of the earth decides to step in as a man if I like you there are privileges you can have when God gets up and dusts himself from his throne and decides to visit your case even you you will be shot are we together now that God can turn again the captivity of men I told you we are reading three scriptures scripture number two Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 Habakkuk chapter 1 ah my spirit is fired up oh God wants to visit somebody Habakkuk chapter 1 behold ye among the heathen notice that the heathen must participate in that process for God to be glorified he wants them to see he says and regard and wonder marvelously for I will walk a walk in your days which ye will not believe though it be told you there is something I would do that even you the recipient the only reason why you believe is just because you are the possessor of it but ordinarily I will walk a walk in your day there is something I can do in your life that I can do in your family that you will sit back and say my God God has done a few things in my own life that even as a man of faith I've had to sit down to say God I fear you God did something in the Red Sea that made Pharaoh look and say this God he is God God did something in Babylon that made Nebuchadnezzar. He wrote a decree. Not to the people, to God. Turn again, captivity. I will do a walk tonight. I will change things. Your prayer point of years. I will so answer it in a way that you will say, Lord, even if you answered it longer, I would still be grateful. But what, what is this? And God says, I did it suddenly lest you think I am so weak that it will have to take a long time. <laughs> Last scripture. Isaiah 41. Ten solid verses we are going to read. Ten to twenty. Isaiah 41. God is turning things around. Turning things around. Turning things around. When your clock refused to move, you fix it. Because it was supposed to move. And if your life has been brought and tied to time, then like the clock, the clock is a revelation of how your life must move. When clock stops moving, you fix it or throw it away. If your life stays in one place, it's a mockery to God, is a mockery to you, is a mockery to all who are connected to you. 
that your life like the clock must turn 41 from verse 10 to 20 fear thou not this is a word for somebody for i am with thee yes in the midst of the pain the disappointment i am with you the threat letter i am still with you a man gave a testimony i think it was just something to encourage you but i'm not sure it's a real story but he held the hands of jesus from that story i'm told and they were walking together in a desert place and then he got to a point where he noticed from the vision or so that there was just the footprint of one man alone and then in the end of it he turned and told jesus he said why did you leave me we i there were four footprints but i got to a point where i saw only two and jesus told him that was when i carried you the footprint you saw was not yours it was mine i knew that your strength had failed you in that desert so i carried you while you were crying not knowing you were carried on the wings of eagles you wouldn't have survived it fear thou not do you know why god starts by telling you fear not because the truth is that life can make you fear no matter how bold you are the speakings of men versus the obvious results that you see in your life or lack of it it can shake even the boldest of us and he starts by saying fear thou not for i am with you he said be not dismayed another word is disappointed he said for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will help i will help thee i will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness we are reading to 20 11. behold all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded he said they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall do what that's where i got the scripture that anyone that fights you goes down instantly it says all day that okay let's let's just read 12. no no go go just just go back to two. thou shall seek them and shall not find them even them that contended with thee they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. 13 for i the lord thy god will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not why because i will help thee don't trivialize the help of god don't when god tells you i want to help you rejoice when god says i want to help you is the same thing um this guy is locked up here he wants to come up but this is stopping him and I say, I want to help you, meaning I am stronger than him, meaning I know something he doesn't know. I want to help you. He says, Fear not, O warm Jacob. Jacob, you are weak, I know. Why does he call Jacob a warm? It's not an insult, it's a description of your frailty. Fear not, O warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Sayeth the Lord thy redeemer the holy one of israel reading to 20 15. behold i will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small thou shalt make the heel as chaff thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the lord and shall glory in the holy one of israel 17. when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for tests read it with me i the lord stop stop when the poor and the needy when they get to a point where there is no hope of deliverance by them strength they know that by themselves and their strength they cannot bring deliverance the bible says i the lord will hear them i the god of israel will not forsake them 18. i will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys and I will make the wilderness 
a pool of water I will make it I will make the wilderness a barren life I will make the wilderness a pool of water I will make a destiny that has no business flourishing a pool of water and the dry land springs of water two more verses 19 I will plant in the wilderness the cedar the shatter tree the mitel, the oil tree I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together fruitfulness 20 the last verse that they may see and know and consider or wonder and understand together that the hand take it higher for me sing me that song take it higher 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 guys be sensitive that or Lord Bagwara song sing it just one time on Lord we start understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this and if it cannot be done the Holy One of Israel had created it to create means to make out of nothing what needs to be moved should be moved what needs should be brought to be brought what is not there should be created 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 carry carry a a potato wrap it somewhere make sure that there's no air there's nothing leave it there for a few days in spite of the fact that there's no air it will still rot and when you open the rot, you will still see worms inside. How they got there is a miracle. That's the same way no matter how the enemy closes every access. God says, when did I start needing a runway? When did I start needing ladder to come to the earth? When did I start needing a loudspeaker for creation to hear me? I am creator. When God speaks, it doesn't matter where it is even if the bones in the valley of ezekiel are under the earth when his voice comes echoed by the voice of the prophet the bible says bone came out listen carefully if you don't believe what i'm teaching you are wasting your time here tonight take your eyes away from the mountains and say lord you are going to recreate my life there are things you will have to turn tonight around for me like the streams of the negev when you read further, it says that those that, 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 that sow in tears will reap in joy. It didn't just say those that sow money. You can sow prayer and he told you the prayer to pray. Turn again my captivity like the streams of the Negev. In the last few months, I have been so passionate about calling forth the creative power of God to assist men i am learning afresh again after many years that god can help men no matter who you are if god does not assist you start crying because life will beat you down to your knees and veto whatever you think is a basis of confidence he said some trust in horses and some chariots but we there is there are a group of people that would trust in the name of our god 
I trust God tonight to change our lives. I trust God tonight to move in a way until it marvels you it is not yet a notable miracle. Scattered here tonight are men and women alongside the challenges and the obstacles that mock God in our lives. We have come from far and near. Many of us made tremendous sacrifices. The question is, do you believe that this God that we serve, that this God can choose by his wisdom and by his love and mercy to visit a family, to visit a man, that God looks at you and says, I have decided to come to you. I've decided to hold your hand. I've decided to lift you. I've decided to give you a testimony. God comes to a beloved sister and says, my daughter, they have laughed at you. Now they are ready to laugh with you like Sarah. I have come to uphold you. I have come to wipe your tears. I have come to prove to men that the rejected stone can become the chief cornerstone. You are called of God, but it's as if you are not called. No anointing, no results, no testimony. No one placing a demand on your grace. But something happens to you. God says, I'm coming to assist you. Hold my hands. God assists us by asking us to give him our hands. Do you know why? Because until your hand is holding him, he cannot move. You see, let me tell you this. Your hand holding him is proof that you trust that he will move. When your hand is still busy trying to walk it your way, you don't qualify for his help. When he wants to help you, he says, place your hand upon my hand. And you are now going to use your faith from hence, not your hand. Let me be the one using my hand to clear the way. Let me be the one to make a way in the wilderness. Let me be the one to make Pharaoh give you gold. I can give you gold by creating, but let's make a caricature out of Pharaoh. Pharaoh, you are the one who will give that gold. There is a name God is called, the Father of Spirits. Understand the revelation behind that name. Every human being is a spirit, he resides in a body. But God is the Father, the author. Every spirit hailed from him. It was out of his spirits that every spirit came about. And the Bible says he is the Father of Spirits. Meaning it is within his power to manipulate every human spirit to cause his purposes to come to pass any and every I spoke to a man this morning before leaving um, very touching the man stood he had been trying to see me and then at the airport he was there with his children and I looked at the man all his children one could not pay his school fees for four years final year had written his last exam but because of school fees they are taking him back to 200 level because he couldn't pay the poor girl, the daughter was there, the man was there standing, and I said, this is the signature of Satan. When Satan comes to your life, you can know he has a signature. He will stamp it on your family. Do your worst. He will stamp it on your destiny. Do your worst. Stamp it on everything around your life. And when God comes to, he will use his hand and erase it and said, let me put my own and see who, what devil will come to take it out of you. I prayed for that man with all my heart. I prayed for him passionately. In that state of poverty and penury, the children and the man, they put together a seed. I, I, I said, can I ever accept this? I, I collected the seed. I prayed with all my heart. And then I said, look, I, I place favor. May your seed become a tray. Let me put something upon it for you. It's called the favor of God. Go back with this anointing and let it turn your life around. That's the works of darkness. Some of us are seated here right now. Our loved ones are in such kind of chaos. Satan. When Satan does a thing, you don't need to ask who did it. He does it so clear that men will know it's his finger. Please don't confuse the works of darkness with the works of God. The works of darkness is darkness. The works of God is light. That's why we're here. To disagree with Satan and insist until we see his power prevail over our lives. Is God speaking to us tonight?
the captivity of Zion the captivity in your family the captivity in your life what is that obstacle that stands before you on the next level you see it but to touch it it looks like there is a resistance there is a limitation we are going to pray are you ready to pray tonight and then I begin to minister to you by the Spirit oh God turn again my captivity like the streams of the naked lift your voice and cry believe me brothers and sisters when you pray God hears you Turn again the captivity. Man Hallelujah. I like you to begin to mention by faith the things that must live your life this night, not tomorrow. Open your mouth and pray. Go ahead. Mention what must leave your life tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone sent a few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message. Please help those under the anointing there. A few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message to my phone. Out of seven graduates, nobody has ever been called for employment. Not even, not, I'm not talking of. I said interview seven graduates no one called for interview and the gentleman according to what he sent me he said he went to bed in the night to sleep and he just slept and that's what he said he said he saw me in the dream I came and I prophesied it was like a koinonia service I laid hands on him and I mentioned the name of an organization that will call him true story he said he woke up physically with an alert from that organization to come for an interview now I don't know whether or not they have given him the job I don't know that part but that's God at work from a dream prophecy you wake up physically with the alert you didn't apply ah. listen listen don't let men fool you this God, ba, let me tell you, when God decides to help you, don't tell him how he would do it. Your ways, his ways are higher, higher than our ways. His thoughts, higher than our thoughts. When, when, you see, it's an act of faith to let God choose how to surprise you. Yours is to place a demand on his integrity by faith and let him choose how to rise and bless you. You may be asking God for a cup of tea whereas he's coming with a hamper for you. Lord, one cup of tea and I'm grateful. And God says, no, if I give you a cup of tea, man can also give you. Let me come with a hamper in a way that you will know this is me. Are we together? Three things I want to tell you. We'll pray one more time. Number one, God can act very fast. He looks slow. 
until he rises from his throne to help you listen to what i'm telling you don't get used to the fact that just because sometimes it looks like god is too slow god can act mysteriously fast i was watching a documentary i like watching documentaries um and on, on a, a, a national geographic channel and then they were showing how these animals all these these sea mammals how they eat one another and sometimes with lightning speed a giant creature can in fractions of a second just dissect another animal and i said wow so don't be deceived by the weight that it is a giant creature doesn't mean it is slow that your god is mighty that heaven is his throne and the earth is his full stool doesn't mean it would take him 10 years to bend down to touch you he can touch you from his throne and you will feel it from the earth god we are talking god here number one god can act fast so that you don't limit god and say lord i know you will act but um no problem no number two listen very carefully god can surpass your wildest imagination now it's difficult to understand but you must believe it god can surpass your wildest imagination he can he can so that it's good that you bring your petitions before him but that you allow your faith to expand to the capacity that can receive everything that god decides to give you and then number three satan and all the limitations that stand before you listen carefully have been defeated not will be defeated have been defeated what happens in a service like this is an establishing of that victory it's difficult to understand but you must believe this because the reality of our circumstances will not allow us to believe this is a fact but it's true because it came from the mouth of god himself that it is finished verdict is what we have come to enforce so that you don't stand and look at the limitation that stands before you and now begin to ask yourself questions but how will god do this promise how is god going to do this if god does it this way there's already a blockage here if god follows this way it will have to be five years before it happens if god uses this method my uncle already hates me and god says you only gave me three methods i have methods as infinite as my names i can use anything i can use a fish to give you coins i can use a donkey to speak to you i can use a bird to bring you bread it doesn't always have to be men it just has to be material bodies i can use anything are we together so tonight as we pray why are we here you have to understand number one we are here we are here to clear the way the forces remember there will always be forces that contend against the word of god we are here to challenge them because most times those forces stand our way they contend with prophecy when the force that stands against your destiny is cleared away you will be surprised how sometimes within minutes your testimony comes number two we are here to allow the anointing of the holy spirit to produce possibilities in our lives the anointing of the holy spirit is his force is his instrument for producing change he creates by his anointing it is his word but that word must be anointed are we together now the word of God without an anointing on it for 30 years could not heal anybody, could not bless anybody. The word just roamed around the streets of Nazareth. But when the word became anointed, it became Christos, the anointed. So the word of God is coming to your life. I want you to be very sensitive, whether it is the prophetic word, whether it's an instruction to pray, whether it is the deliverance session. Don't just watch people fall and roll and do all of that. Let your heart connect. Be angry. There is an obstacle for sure. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of strange spirits molest you. You get up and say, it's all right. How can it be all right? If it's all right, who invited them to your life? Good things about to happen to you all of a sudden. Your enemies reach your destiny helpers before you and they give a bad word that closes your door, recycles your pain again.
then for many of us what you need is that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will call forth the men the men component God helps by bringing men God can agree with you men can disagree you will still suffer God agreed for David to become king Samuel refused David remained in the wilderness until Samuel agreed men can stop your breakthrough it's not just demons men can stop your breakthrough and not all men are castable there are men who are gates even though they are hedonistic God doesn't cast them he gives you access to their heart when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies there are some enemies you can't drive because they are still gates are we together Lord I'm ready for you tonight lift your voice and pray pray Lord I'm ready for you this is my family hallelujah glory to the Lamb glory to the Father you are seated on the throne hallelujah glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Seated on the throne. You are seated on the throne. 
Let me do the singing. I'm going to sing this song once. I want those who are under the anointing while I sing. This instruction God is giving me. This same song. You guys have done your good music. Let me prophesy now with it. You'll be surprised to see what will happen. In here, outside, as I'm singing this song. If that anointing finds you, as you come out here, begin to rejoice. Because it is strange breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Shabalakato Sabadasiata. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. 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 No power can stand it. Glory to the Father. The forces must let you go. Hey, hallelujah. There's authority in the song that I'm singing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to my Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. They are leaving you now. They are leaving you now. I'm speaking by the Spirit. They are leaving you now. There are chains over you, leaving now. There are chains leaving you now. I'm ministering by the Spirit. There are chains are leaving you now. Even the lawful captives. Chains. I'm seeing chains breaking from the hands of men. Chains be broken. The worship team already prepared our hearts. I command the chains to be broken. By the authority of this kingdom. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I'm commanding chains to break. Bring them out. The anointing of the Spirit is breaking chains over flow one, two, three online. Chains. Chains of captivity. All kinds of bondages. Every force of darkness. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Release their destinies. Hallelujah. 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 
Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Now listen, God is giving me an instruction. Hold on. If there is any power associated with your family, you will know now by the fire that falls on you. This is what the Lord is telling me. I'm about to pray. That if there is anything that is demonic, responsible for the challenge of your family, get ready now. Because I see a wind of fire moving from this place right there, outside. I declare it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Spirit visit men and women and families now. Hold on. Listen, I'm still praying. Listen to me. The Bible says that Paul was at a place, it was cold in the night, and they put wood together. When they said the, a viper was there, but it could not be seen. But when they set fire on the wood, the fire exposed the viper. I declare Shabbatos Katadia by the fire of the Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every viper hiding in any family, hiding in any destiny, be exposed now. Be exposed now. Be exposed now. Be exposed now. Every viper, every snake, scorpion. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Where are the forces fighting your advancement? Forces fighting men's advancement. The Lord is judging them now. Judging them now. Judging them now. It's time for you to move forward. I command judgment. On the forces fighting your advancement, I command judgment. On the forces fighting your advancement, overflow one, lift your hands, please. Everyone in overflow one, lift your hands. The Lord is ministering to me. Overflow one, lift your hands. There is a mighty deliverance that is coming there. At the count of three overflow one, I want you to shout Jesus. As you shout Jesus, I'm seeing gates with chains breaking. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Bring that lady. That lady going back. I'm looking at a lady, but in the spirit, I'm watching. I'm not saying you're a bad girl, my dear. All I'm seeing is a serpent. I'm not seeing a human being. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I expose that serpent now. Glory to the Father. You must be on the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want to pray a very interesting prayer. Don't mind me. Just allow me. I'm ministering under the anointing. I'm going to say exactly what I'm hearing in the spirit. And if it doesn't sound logical, don't worry. Just let me do the prayer. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes, serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. God is against you. Ebenezer, the helper of man, is against you. Snakes, I say it again. Be judged, be judged. No rest, no peace. Be judged. Snakes, be judged. I'm seeing a lady vomiting something. That's what I'm seeing in a vision right now. I don't know what it is I'm seeing, but in the name of Jesus Christ, God is releasing people. There is victory. God is helping people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire, not impartation, fire consuming people's head. And God is saying his restoration of lost glory. That's what I'm seeing. Restoration. Something that used to be in your life and all of a sudden faded away. I'm seeing fire coming on people's heads. Where are they, oh God? I stretch my hands now. Let the fire bring restoration. 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 Help them, please. Restoration. 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 I command restoration of every lost glory. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. All those who are out in front under the anointing here, I declare every legal grounds upon which any spirit is operating in your life at the count of three by the mystery of the blood, it leaves you now one, two, three, go! Go, 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 go out of their lives. In the name of Jesus, out of their lives. When the blood speaks, nothing else speaks again. Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family here. And I'm seeing that the father in that family, I don't know if he's out of pressure, but went to a herbalist and they gave him something to go and bury in the house. You may not even know it. This is something that happened a while ago. And whatever it is, seemed to backfire. When it came to money issues, he didn't go and pay like, give the herbalist whatever it is that's what God is showing me now and I'm seeing that because of that every door in that family everything just closed I'm going to pray Lord wherever whoever represents that family here whether inside or outside or online I'm praying right now by the mercy of the God of heaven whatever enchantment and activities of darkness invoked by those herbalists. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Who 
is Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca, like Becky. Rebecca. Rebecca, I'm hearing your name, Rebecca. Rebecca. You are seated on the throne. Stand up. You are Rebecca. That's the person I'm talking about. Come. Stand up. You are seated on the throne. Madam, where are you coming from? You came from Abuja. Yes, I'm seeing you in a vehicle from Abuja yes, coming. You came alone? I came with my niece. And my younger brother and my cousins, they live in Zaria. You, One came from Kano. My, you, but you came from Abuja. Yes, I came from What's Abuja. What's your name? Asma or Rebecca. 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 Asma or... Come. It's time for your victory. Lift your hands. There is. Let her go now. I command the spirit oppressing you. You have come to Koinonia, the place where God dwells. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power that fights you. In the name of Jesus Christ, this woman is going to return with very strange testimonies. Mama, you are Rebecca. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. The Lord has located you and end comes to your captivity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Samnaka. Please help this woman. Are they, are they, this mama, are they Rebecca? Mama, are you Rebecca? Rebecca. Huh? Rebecca. You are Rebecca, mama? Okay. This one, too, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes God gives a word and then I'm, I'm talking to you now, my dear. Where are you from? Saminaka. State of origin. Region. Kaduna. You are from Kaduna State. Yes, Come, sir. I want to pray for you. There's trouble in your family. You are in need of the power of God desperately. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end this captivity. The lady that is going back, tap her. Just tell her to look at me. Just look at me. It's over now in Jesus name all of you are Rebecca my dear salvation is coming and anointing is leaving me to you and it's for your family from next month you will start hearing strange testimonies open doors mama you are Rebecca who else is Rebecca all of you are Rebecca I'm going to pray for you okay ma I have to pray for you yes ma the spirit of death is following your family I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you father in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands over our mommy help her please I command the spirit of death one of you here I'm, I don't know which of you but I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you in front here there's one of you an anointing is coming on you um, the Lord is bringing deliverance right now you can't stand it it's, it's the power of God one of you an anointing is coming on you for strange deliverance mama be free in the name of Jesus Christ Hi. There's, there's serious witchcraft excuse me just a minute I command that spirit to leave this lady now you must go you must let her go in the name of Jesus Christ he, he who the son sets free is free indeed in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Uh, this, this mama doesn't speak English. I think she speaks Yoruba. She, she speaks Yoruba. Who is? Ejimi, can you come or someone? Just tell her the Lord is bringing breakthrough. You can whisper it in her ear. It doesn't have to be. It's your mother. Come. The Lord is breaking. The Lord is breaking a yoke. The yoke of delay. Ah, as I just mentioned delay, I just saw fire. Just left me. As I just mentioned that word delay. I'm about to pray on it. But since, since I just saw the fire, let me just do what I saw in the spirit. 
the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay i say it again be judged now the spirit of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay open your heart open your heart and pray the spirit of delay be judged now any kind of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay be judged now be judged now be judged now breakthrough for your family God is bringing breakthrough mama God is bringing breakthrough your son will tell you in Yoruba in the name of Jesus Christ there's something on you that makes wrong people come to you I have to pray for you I used, I'm looking at you very bad people come to you for bad reasons no serious person you know what I'm saying I don't want to start bringing long it's not there is something there's a spirit in you that attracts those kind of people they will never pass you and go free they must turn back and this thing is destroying your life hold my hands shout Jesus look at this so you just think it's just love you are in love with a beautiful girl it's not just love out now go in the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to the Lamb glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I've not seen this in a long time. The Lord is showing me a map again, and this map is going to Kogi State. I'm laying my hands now. Kogi State. Let that anointing begin to find people within that region. Now I'm praying. You come within that region. Let the anointing find you. Deliverance for that region now. Shatakoto Seketea. Kogi State. Deliverance now. From any strange power. Any force of darkness. If you don't know your state of origin and you are from there, you can know it now by the anointing. In the name of Jesus, anyone from that region, that's the region the anointing of the Spirit is focusing on now. I command deliverance now. The strong men within those regions, let God's people go now. Release them right now. The spirits of the grave, the spirits of ancestry, I cost you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 please lift your hands we'll pray for the sick shortly but there are people here why God brought you tonight is to receive the healing anointing I just saw it I don't know where they are they are in almost every overflow there are representations Lord Jesus anyone who you brought here to receive the anointing for healing let that anointing come this is your moment now. Receive it now. Ordained by God to receive this anointing today. Ordained by God to receive the grace for healing. I'm seeing that anointing coming on two people in worship team. Two people in worship team. That anointing, that grace. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. The anointing to heal the sick you don't just pray for the sick there is an anointing I say it again the anointing 
to bring healing to transport the power of God from the throne to their lives receive that anointing right now hallelujah hallelujah mama come please please help her she's not running by herself it's under the anointing mama i see a new dimension of healing coming on you a new time just hold her a new dimension of healing in the name of jesus christ ah this mama is going to pray for the sick and you'll be surprised there is an unusual anointing upon you for barrenness for barrenness i'm praying help that lady please in the name of jesus receive that anointing mama in the name of jesus christ the grace the grace in the name of jesus christ Jada soto sikato si alaka hambaris. Leketo sada pratuski adabaladush. The Lord is asking me to stand in front of you, just to stand in front of you. That's the instruction I'm getting. Marako supriata kosi alakatush. The light shines out of darkness. God is removing something from your chest. I'm seeing something leaving you. I don't know what this is, but in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand in front of you. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. All of you who are standing here in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. And I declare, come, let me touch your child. I'm going to pray for favor. When you hear me say favor, lift your hands and receive. You need it in your life. Too many people have taken advantage of you. Even as I'm seeing people laughing. That's that's why I just stopped. This is very strange. A strange anointing is a sign of victory in the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. Strange. It's an anointing, very strange anointing. You see, if you are not spiritual and you don't understand why God does these things, it's not showmanship. The Bible says he's, he filled their mouth with laughter. I read it for you. You can't stand it. It's something, that laughter you see is warfare. It's not just laughing hysterically. I release it. The families that is for, the individuals that is for, laughter is a weapon in the spirit. It disarms the enemy. so my dear when i'm praying for favor please you stand to receive it eh? but i bless your child in jesus name hallelujah there's someone your family member has been missing this is more than one year who is that person because the person who is missing is still alive let if she's the one who is missing don't come and tell lies here. Are you sure? My father, I Your talked father. to you about it before. You told me about yes, it? Yes, I can't you remember. Prayed. Where, what happened? When last did you see him? 2016, August, Saturday. He told me he was coming and that was the end. From where? From Edo State, Benin. And you've not seen him? We've not seen him since date. We are still in search of him. How about you? My cousin's sister. Your cousin's sister is missing? Yes. All these people, they are, leave them. Their loved ones are just find out once there don't please if, if you are not related to the people don't please don't come here we're going to pray generally if you if you do it like that there will be chaos how about you yes, sir, my in -law. your in-law yes sir what do you mean your in-law from the United states okay all of you your loved ones are missing your loved one is missing who is that your younger brother missing. missing since when 2014 2014 yes they've not seen him yes sir you see how satan works how can somebody leave home for you to sympathize with people put them in your shoes 
imagine that your child left home and said mommy I'm coming and never comes back I'm prophesying to you three years your child went and said mommy I'm coming until today come mama give her the mic hold on mama your, your child is alive this boy you see are they twins or is it the same person one this yeah. is the only one what the only, happened to him he, he left school i put him in APU, he refused poly he refused he's busy taking drugs going about lying to people that his parents are dead all over at times they call me in the police station or your state but that court that is arrested i don't know how they set him free at times you see our Honestly, let me speak towards young people. It's, it's okay, Mama. It's your only son. Your only son. One, one, get one. That's you all. Know? Yes. You, that's how you know it's a spirit. Because the devil sat down and saw that this boy is, will bring joy to the mother. And then the devil decided to, if, will the lady not marry and go? Huh? He's very intelligent. In school, he was in the AP, he left the school and go away. What's his name? Awal is his name. Awal. Awal. Yes. Hi. We are going to pray. Like a month ago, from what God is showing me, this boy had problem with police. They were smoking. In the they it, were smoking it, Igbo. It is, Police came and packed them with his friends. Drugs. This is what Mama, let me talk to you now. I'm the one talking to you. I know. You see, when you see me pray about this, this drug, this thing, that drug is a spirit. It's more than with due respect to doctors and this thing. It's not just because of the physical thing it gives. I'm telling you, that thing is a spirit. If you have a child or you know someone that takes that thing, counseling is not the way out. There is a real spirit that must be casted out. Are we together? Some of you here right now, seated in this program, you love God, but that, what, what they, they call it, codeine, again. Uh, mama, 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 don't worry. It's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Because you see the way these boys are desperate for this money. They will coin every kind of story and beg you and lie you give them 100 naira you give, once you give them enough to take this thing they will disappear and go and rubbish it let me tell you there is none of those boys that is bad in himself there is none of those girls that are bad in themselves is the influence of spirits nobody will be killing himself and eating death like that every day mama you have come for miracle service god will do something about you in this situation who is this my brother it's my mom's younger brother. Your for mom's over, younger brother? Yes, for missing. over 10 years, we have not seen him. 10 years, yes, we've sir. not seen him. Oh, pray. How about you, sir? My elder brother. You're the brother. pastor that came from Warrior. Yeah, okay. From Delta State. From Delta State, okay. Uh, my elder brother was missing about 20 years ago. We really forget, forgot about him in Ghana. He was in Ghana and he's, and he's yes, missing. Yes. Okay, let me pray with you. It's an instruction. Because some of the situations now, they are even very difficult situations. I, I don't know in myself whether some of them are alive or they've gone to be with the Lord or whatever. But my job is to pray. Because God has instructed me to pray. Mama, please stop crying. You came here with faith in your heart. Let me tell you, you must eat the fruit of your labor. And I'm saying this, I'm using this mother as a point of contact, not just to every mother here. But to all our mothers, the force that wants them to labor and die in pain, go to their graves in pain, we challenge that force now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's an error to sow and someone reap. In the name of Jesus, every true mother that has labored to sow, may they reap in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying. Everyone here whose loved one is missing and alive and walking in the earth here, 
I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. Jesus called Lazarus. And when he called Lazarus, he came out. I call them by their various names in the spirit. For as long as they are alive and walking on this earth, I put a desire in them to reconnect to their families. Those who have been jailed because, you see, some of these people, let's be very fair, some of them, they, they smuggle their way out of the country. They go to Libya, they go to all of these places. Some of them go to do prostitution, unfortunately. Some of them go because they want to make money. Someone tells them, come, travel, and all of that. So some of them, they may even be in cells in some of these places you may never know. But regardless of the case, for as long as they are on earth, we cry for mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. May they be reconnected back to you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. I hope someone is holding that person shouting there. My friend, come. You are doing your ushering work, but I will pray for you before you go back. Eh? Look at me. I'm looking at you. The Lord is telling me to tell you, August 7th is a month that breakthrough will begin in a very strange way for you. Hold my hands. August 7th. Don't forget. Write it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this gentleman. You have revealed to me August 7th. I prophesy to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. I'm seeing a ring, a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring. Ordinary, when you see a ring, you would think maybe God is saying he's bringing marriage. Maybe marriage to families. But this one, God is delivering people from spirit entities with all kinds of fraternities over their lives. Right now, I stretch my hands. That's why it's important to let the Holy Ghost interpret things. I know that many of you may not believe what I'm praying, but you just allow me to pray. Every spirit entity covenanting to you as a husband or as a wife, I set fire on this ring I see in the spirit. Be free from them now. Ladies, be free now. I command those spirit entities to release you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the gentlemen, I command freedom for you now from any entity laying claims over you. You go to bed and they come to you in the night. They try to molest you. They try to sleep with you. They can use faces of people you know or you don't know or animals. Ay, 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 ay. Anyone under the sound of my voice, who any stranger comes to him in the night while you sleep, fire is coming on you now. 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 I command that they let you go now. For some of us, when good things are about to happen, just when you are about to get it, you go in the night and someone comes to sleep with you in that dream. As soon as you wake up from that experience, no matter what it is, it's gone. Whether it is favor, whether it is breakthrough, fire is still speaking. I'm praying. Shabbat at the count of three, oh God, you who is a mighty deliverer, I pray that your anointing will search for these ones and bring them deliverance now. One, two, three. Let there be deliverance for you now. Deliverance for you now. 
from any spirit entity laying claims on your destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This lady with lime, yes, you come. No, look at me, look at me. I'm talking at that one with you, yes, come. Where are you coming from? Benway. Benway State. Look at me. Look at this. Are you seeing? She just stood there. And while I was looking, I just saw a spirit through her look at me and turn the face. Now, it's very funny how these things work. See, one of the prayers you must pray in your life is for the grace of open eyes. If your eyes are closed in this life and all that is open is your brain, you will be in trouble. Open eyes is not something just for prophets. It's one of the true riches of the kingdom. You must cry that God will open your eyes. Not to see nonsense around, to see something that is destiny molding. Now look at this girl. How will I stand and see someone there and call her out? Imagine that this lady went back like this. To her she will now say, oh God, so this is how you didn't locate me. Sensitivity, discernment is a priceless spiritual gift. Sensitivity. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Not wishing, praying in the Holy Ghost. You activate your organs. You have to pray for a long time in the spirit. For your spirit to be heightened. To be able to perceive spiritual things. Otherwise you will get into all kinds of error. Wrong perception. That you have started seeing things does not mean they are clear. You must continue in the place of prayer until it becomes accurate. I just showed you the thing of ring now. Some of you may see that ring now and then tell somebody it's, it's not marriage as it were. You see, it was something else, but it's a ring. This lady has bad luck in her life. Very bad luck. I have to pray for you. She just came quietly standing. This I would have shared the grace. And the dear lady will go back. And then it will look as if God is not in the place. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing you cough. I'm seeing her cough. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That she's beginning to cough. I don't know why, what is having to do with coughing. But in the name of Jesus Christ. Shatos let everything that speaks against you leave now this lady swallowed something in the dream. Someone came to her, gave her something, and she swallowed in the dream. If you ever say you like this girl, everything in your life goes down immediately. I'm not saying she's a bad girl. Please don't get me wrong. I'm teaching her something here. She's not a bad girl, but this is the operation in her life. There are people, do you know why we minister to people like that? This is what sometimes prophets see, that if they don't get discernment, they go around saying, someone now may not see this correctly and say this girl is a witch he's not exactly wrong in terms of saying that there is war associated with her life you can come now and hold her hands as a businessman in two months of relationship everything goes down and she knows she loves god but if you are not discerning you will now call the poor girl a witch and everybody will start running away from her she's not a witch there is just a challenge and then if you also say she's all right like that and somebody marries her that guy's life will be torn into pieces this is the testimony of so many families it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true human beings carry spirits they carry presence father liberty for her 
the devil is already ah someone in overflow one and overflow three is being delivered from fibroid 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 i just saw a hand reaching into someone's like someone's stomach to bring out something in the name of jesus christ that devil of fibroid we pray for the sick shortly we'll be very fast at it fibroid is gone now in the name of jesus christ our time is gone can we pray for the sick very quickly now listen i want you if you are coming here to be prayed for come full of faith you don't have to say what is wrong with you if you are not asked don't worry and all of us who are going to pray for the sick we are going to make this very fast are we together now um as always overflow one and part of overflow two part of overflow two you will come in here come and stand in front here uh, no no not main auditorium sorry not overflow one the main auditorium and then half of overflow two allow them to come here overflow one move to your projector stand please the remaining part of overflow two and the, those standing at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three all of you trusting god for healing please move to your projector stand we have about 10 15 minutes to do this very quickly while we are doing that ushers and uh, I, I don't know whatever whoever needs to help them submit your prayer requests very quickly if you have your prayer request you are coming out here for healing come come there is a God that heals. Please, if you have your prayer request, you can lift it up, write it very quickly. No, no, the ushers will collect it. Ushers. And, and then if, if there are not many, PR department can help them. Let's make it snappy. Or any other department can help them. Let's, let's make it very... We're going to make it very fast please and please let there be orderliness once you have been prayed for we may not have time to take testimonies we are just going to pray very very quickly hallelujah okay let's see um ejimi ejimi and benga overflow three two of you can go to overflow three um let's see pastor alpha and promise overflow one outside pastor femi and kenny overflow two let's do it like that I'll, I'll pray i'll pray for the ones here by myself hallelujah let's pray together in the name of jesus everybody say amen, amen. father we declare corporately that your healing power will begin to flow heal the sick deliver the oppressed and in the name of Jesus, bring yourself glory by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Please make sure while we are praying, the ushers also come to these people in front so that they can have it. We'll be very, very fast so that we finish on time. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above every other name.
every other name fade away.
It's not a ritual. Declare that everything I've dropped here in the name of Jesus becomes an answered prayer. Please, ushers, make sure make sure that we have everyone's request here. Those online, connect by faith. I'm praying now. Make sure you are praying. Prophesy. Are you praying? Father, I believe. I believe. If the devil didn't stop your request from getting here, he will not stop it from being answered. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. I anoint this request. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. I anoint them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders, breakthroughs, impossible situations. Turn things around, oh God. You have declared that you are turning things around. Turn around everyone's captivity. Turn around everyone's captivity. Let there be testimonies. Break the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Every time we do this, we do this one as instructed. And then number two, because it's an opportunity to have everyone's desire and everyone's request here. Father, I stand upon these requests by faith. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Lord, these requests are a representation of the needs of your people. I stand, oh God, in the name of Jesus on their behalf. And I cry, let fire fall upon this request. And I prophesy to you on account of this request that the Egyptians you see today, in the name that is above all names, may you see them no more forever. I say it again that the Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Some of you, before this month is over, you will return with strange testimonies. 
is still two days or a day or so to the end of the month between now and even tomorrow may you return with strange testimonies whoever must be judged for this prayer to be answered may it be so whoever must receive a conviction about you between tonight and tomorrow or till whenever for this prayer to be answered we declare it so in the name of Jesus and so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ put your hands together for Jesus lift your hands to receive the prophetic word now we're rounding up the miracle service is not complete if you don't receive a prophetic word prophecy is powerful it's powerful it creates I release testimonies to your life let me say it again because many of you didn't believe it I release testimonies to your life I release testimonies to your life I release testimonies to your life I release testimonies to your life. The key that you need to open the door for the next level, may it be handed it over to you in the spirit. The kind of favor that you will need to testify in the name of Jesus. May the God that gives favor to men grant you favor. In the name of Jesus for those in need of restoration I prophesy receive restoration for those in need of an urgent miracle a miracle that has to happen on time otherwise it will cost you I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names let it happen to you even within 24 hours, let there be that miracle. For those who have never had an opportunity to laugh, every time you want to laugh, something comes that must force you to cry. I announce to you, the season of your laughter begins tonight. Where you have been despised, I place an anointing upon you and tonight I call you Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here in ministry and things are not working, you are doing your best but it's just not working. Receive the grace to begin to walk in a greater dimension of signs and wonders. Anyone here in business, in the name of Jesus, you are entering the season of your best days from now anyone here trusting God for a job for you or for your loved ones between now and the next miracle service return with your testimony return with your testimony return with your testimony every challenge plaguing your family not just you a family thing everyone is crying from it could be patterns could be whatever it is I stretch my hands right now and in the name that is above all names, I bring those patterns to an end now. For those trusting God for financial miracles, your miracle, the area you are trusting God is directly in the area of finances. I agree with you and I release my faith. May the God that prospers men surprise you. everyone here called barren or standing in for any barren person return as a mother of joyful children the anointing that makes things work the grace for performance i release that grace upon your life everything that is upon your hand now i command it to work in the name of jesus christ and i announce to you let july from july 1st to july 31st may it be named a month of strange miracles strange wonders strange miracles strange wonders 
strange miracles strange wonders in the name of Jesus Christ tonight for some of you as you sleep may my God show you the secrets of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ every area where you are trusting God to give you divine direction in the name of Jesus every spiritual mechanism that God can use to communicate to you I declare that let it be so for you revelation after revelation finally whoever needs to arise and help you they already have the capacity all they need is the willingness I pray for you let me tell you breakthrough is very easy when your helper likes you your helper has the means but he needs to have the heart some have the heart but they don't have the means you need both I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that any man and woman position around you that has the ability to help you I pray that God will put it in their hearts to help you I speak over your life a new level of spiritual encounters I say it again a new level of spiritual encounters for some of you I'm holding my Bible as a prophetic act because some of you have divorced this book not willingly but by reason of the operation of spirit the only time you open your Bible is in church or a koinonia right now fall in love with this bible fall in love with the word of god an appetite for the word of god i release upon you every kind of spiritual laziness you say i wake up to pray by 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning or you get up to pray and five minutes you are snoring back it's an attack i cast that spirit over your life fresh fire upon your prayer altar in the name of Jesus Christ we declare peace over Nigeria we declare peace over the north we declare peace over Plateau State we declare peace over Kaduna State we declare peace over Zaria. Specifically for Zaria, we fortify the spiritual borders of this city. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that no orchestration of darkness will arise to disrupt the peace and serenity of the people. May the angels of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, secure the borders of this city. Secure the borders of the north. And we pray that the perpetrators of wickedness be judged by God in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here and you need Jesus desperately. Keep standing please. You need Jesus desperately. Desperately. You are saying man of God, I need Jesus as a matter of urgency. I have seen the value I have seen the usefulness of Jesus in my life hitherto every time I hear about Jesus I I resent him I scorn and laugh at those who talk about him but from tonight's meeting the Holy Spirit has convicted me and I testify and with all humility I declare that I need him second category of people man of God I love Jesus with all my heart but I know that I need a strengthening in my spiritual life. Things have gone haywire. If God does not help me, there will be no way out for me. You belong to these two categories, Overflow 1, Overflow 2, Main Auditorium. I'd like you to walk out here quickly. Overflow 3, I'd like you to run to your projector stand. Very quickly, I'm counting 1 to 5 and we're done. 1, God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia, they are coming. 2, you're still indecisive. It's not good for your destiny. Jesus, I love you. I want to make a genuine decision for you. Three. Please, if they are coming from other overflows, clear the way for them. You are running to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. No man condemns you. 
you are before his throne of grace to obtain mercy to obtain grace we are all products of his mercy and grace four please come quickly quickly double up apostle i'm not sure whether i'm born again or not join them join them very quickly i remember coming out for an altar call but i i honestly don't know the name of what i'm doing now join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do for them Jesus said, ye must be born again. Salvation is non-negotiable. Listen, let me encourage everyone. Koinonia is not the only platform for genuine salvation. The first mission of this ministry is massive salvation of souls. We must seek and save the lost. Not just save the lost when they come to us. We must seek them. Are we together? Because many of them may not be in a position ordinarily where they can receive salvation. We seek them through intercession. We seek them by engaging them in the conversation that leads them to Christ. God bless you. Lift your hands, all of you. Some of you are crying. You are standing before the Lord. Honestly, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say this loud after me. You are making a confession to the God of heaven. Say, Jesus. Say it again. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the Son of God. Tonight... I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny. Therefore, I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. I hand over my life and everything about me to you and to your Lordship. I receive eternal life. I receive the Spirit of God and I declare from today until forever I belong to Jesus I declare that I'm a child of God the grace to walk in victory is mine amen keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you father we give you all the glory for drawing these ones no man can come to you except you draw them I pray that the grace that keeps men, let that grace keep these ones. The grace that lifts men, let that grace lift them. The grace that secures them, let that grace secure them. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the grace to walk in victory be given to you. You will move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this bold decision. Please, I'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands. Just follow them in concert. All of you, there will be a group of people to just talk and pray with you very quickly. All of you, God bless you. Let's honor them. Let's appreciate them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.